Keyboards. They seem like something you probably know a lot about, but I bet you'd be pretty surprised if you looked into them. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on GameRanks, 10 gaming keyboard facts you probably didn't know. Number 10, there's a keyboard that has some interesting buttons on it. It's specifically a keyboard used on MIT Lisp machines, which were computers that pioneered a lot of general purpose technology we see in computers today, way back in the 1980s. It was called a Space Cadet keyboard and it had the regular control control key that you see on a lot of keyboards, but it also had super and hyper keys on it, which sounds very gaming oriented, although the Space Cadet keyboard wasn't really created for gaming specifically, but it allowed for an extremely large number of keyboard combinations to the point where it could actually print 8,000 different characters. Now, if you used that as a gaming keyboard, in theory, it could really pack quite a wallop for a complex game that might need a lot of different commands. But I don't think anything is gonna go on the market anytime soon, it's that complex. Number nine, in the era of the GameCube, Nintendo made an ASCII keyboard controller. And no, it didn't look anything like that miniaturized keyboard that you can buy to put either on a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One controller that lets you do chat stuff as well as type easier and quicker. It's a GameCube controller that is essentially extended between the left side and the right side to accommodate room for an ASCII keyboard. And that is the crux of it. That's the full thing. It is huge. It is the size of a keyboard with controller things glued on the ends. But here's the interesting thing to think about. No, we don't really need a keyboard like that of any sort. It's definitely not a necessity. But what other thing has Nintendo made where they take the sides of the controller and essentially augment it to the sides of another device? The Nintendo Switch. In fact, in some ways, this is an ancestor to the Nintendo Switch. Switch. It's obviously not the same thing, but that's often how design work happens. People take little pieces of something that they think works and make it into something else. Number eight, games used to be shipped with like keyboard overlays. They'd be little cardboard or plastic things that you could just lay over a keyboard and they had all of the commands of the game listed on them. This was of course back when control schemes deviated significantly more and also you always bought a physical copy of a game. It wasn't that hard to include something like that with the package because you weren't downloading the game which doesn't come in a box with an instruction manual or anywhere to put anything physical. It actually kind of sucks when you think about it, because in some ways it actually allowed for more control schemes to be experimented with, and now we see a lot of games sticking to the WASD scheme. Not that that's bad. It's definitely good to have a standard thing for all games in a specific genre, but maybe being able to include that kind of a thing allowed a little bit more experimentation with genre itself. Itself. But that's a full discussion we can have another time. Number seven, it is possible to build your own little micro keyboards that do whatever the F you want. For instance, a gentleman by the name of James Hobson created a little circuit board, soldered a whole bunch of stuff together, and created a keyboard that can be programmed to do a lot of different keystrokes and macros simply by pressing a single button. I mean, you can also buy them, but it's a lot cooler to make them. A lot cooler. Number six, you can get carpal tunnel syndrome fairly easy from using a keyboard in a way that you would think is the right way. Way to use it. You know those little kickstands they tend to put on the backs of keyboards? I call them kickstands because I don't really know what to call them. Because they are there, there's the temptation to use them. When you do that, you end up making it so that your wrist bends, and as your wrist bends, holding them up, putting pressure on it, can cause carpal tunnel. The best thing you can do is just have the keyboard flat on the desk and keep your wrists up above the keyboard just a little bit so that your arms aren't really bending at the wrist. Believe me, as far as gaming goes for a long time, it's gonna end up working out better for you. Number five, somebody put together a really cool custom keyboard by machining a bunch of metal. Making a split keyboard, it was more ergonomic. Again, for the carpal tunnel, it, it's much better not to have those wrists bending. And he basically built a keyboard that allows his wrists not to bend. It's slanted, it's curved. It's a pretty cool keyboard. It was actually not built for gaming again, but it really looks like it should be on account it has arcade buttons on it. It was actually built for like AutoCAD engineering work, which is pretty cool as well, honestly. 
Let's just see if we could have some arcade style games using this keyboard though, maybe, yeah. Number four, somebody made a fight stick out of a keyboard, some cardboard, and a pencil. And it's not like great looking or anything. It's not gonna make you go, wow, look at that. What it is gonna do on the other hand is make you realize that everything can be something else, especially if you're a gamer. Number three, somebody made a wall out of a bunch of different keyboards. Now that doesn't sound cool until you realize that all of these keyboards have LEDs in them. Using 160 different keyboards, as well as a program called LAM 8-Bit, pixel art and animations was displayed on all of these keyboards, and truthfully, whether or not you find this cool is irrelevant to me. I find this very, very cool. This is perhaps the coolest thing on this list for me. The detail of the animations is actually pretty good considering it's being displayed on keyboards. Just on keyboards. Also, some of the pixel art I would like to play in an actual game. Preferably the actual, like, pretend game that they had running on the keyboards. A side-scrolling shooter with some pretty sweet art. Can someone make this happen? Number two, somebody created a really tiny one-button keyboard that can be worn as a necklace and paired with a computer via Bluetooth. It doesn't do anything specific. You can program it if you need a single key to do whatever it is you're doing, but you don't want to sit close enough to the desk that you have the keyboard or you aren't using a laptop or whatever. You can program a key to do it. You can sit way back in that easy chair, press the button, have the start menu show up or whatever, and then use a mouse that you have sitting with you in the easy chair as well. Eat some Cheetos. I'm actually very interested in, in what you would do if you had one button, but you could be as comfortable as you wanted when you pressed it. And finally, number one, just a regular plain old fact, one that definitely isn't gonna mess up your usage of a keyboard at all. It's not gonna make you feel weird when you press those buttons. Nope, nothing like that. Okay, so there is more bacteria on computer keyboards than there is bacteria on toilet seats. Oh. The average desktop actually has about 400 times more bacteria than the average toilet seat. And guess what? If more than one person uses that keyboard, it's probably gonna have more bacteria on it. Hey, hey, you know what? That's your gamer keyboard too. Can you imagine a hospital computer's keyboard? Hey, there's 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 more bacteria on a hospital keyboard. If you don't see them spray it off with an antibacterial thing, just assume that they're gonna get sick too. Ha, the joke's on them. They're gonna get it too. And so is everyone in the office and everybody in the home. Disease is unavoidable. Sleep well, gamers. A quick bonus fact, if you get on Google Street View on Google Maps, you can control it like a first-person shooter, kind of, ish. It's not perfect, but it's pretty great. It's certainly better than using the mouse. If you've done something wild with a keyboard or know something that we don't, or just want to talk about something that we brought to you in this video that you didn't know before, like the germ thing specifically, leave us a comment, and if you like this video, please click the button. If you're not subscribed now, it would of course be a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.